Welcome to this version of Pit Stop. Today I'm down Glen Burnie, Maryland, and we're going to meet Lego Master Mel. Mel Brown, who actually made this beautiful piece of art. This is made out of Legos, and that's why he is the Lego Master. Uh, this is the old Patterson Movie Theater on Eastern Avenue that's now converted to the Baltimore Creative Alliance. And uh, they hired him to build this, and the attention to detail is just awesome. So let's meet Mel. Mel, what is a Lego Master? A Lego Master is one that achieves the way to bend the brick. Now, now I've, I've acquired some, squi some skills uh, over a amount of time, and uh, I'm now a Lego Master because I have, you know, acquired those, those skills. And so what, what that means for me is that I can actually create a piece of art out of Lego, things that people play with every day. Now, how did you get into Legos? I got into Lego because of my, my, my little grandson, who's now seven. But four years ago, we went to go watch a Lego, uh, Lego movie called uh, a Lego Batman. Um, and he loved the Batmobile. And so I went to the store, bought the Batmobile. We built it together. Now it's our favorite pastime. Wow. Okay. Now, last year, you appeared on the Fox show, Lego Masters. That's right. What, what, what was that experience like? Tell us a little bit about that. Lego Masters, appearing on that show was quite the adventure. It was like being in winter wonderland, you know, something so magical. So many Lego bricks everywhere. The, the, the possibilities of building is just was endless. And just to be there with my buddy Jermaine was just uh, amazing. What were the challenges? Oh, some of the challenges were, were pretty tough um, because it, it was, you know, they, you didn't know until they told you and they hit the clock and say go. Um, but you had the city challenge. You had the amusement parks challenge. You had the space blow up challenge. You had the bridge challenge. And you also had the, uh, the cut in half challenge. So how did you do over well? Over, how, uh, how did you, how did out you of, do it? Out of 10 teams, we came in fifth place. So it was like midway through. We were like midway through. Um, we didn't make the top three like we were hoping to. We, we got a little bit of snag uh, on, the, uh, on the bridge challenge. Ran out of time. But our bridge would have probably held up had we had a little bit more time. But, you know, that's the way the ball bounces. This is what you're looking at is the old Patterson Theater that is now occupied by the Baltimore Creative Alliance. And for their 25th anniversary, they were able to do a little bit of crowdfunding and treat themselves to a Lego uh, project right here. They reached out to me uh, through, through Instagram and, you know, and Fox 45 because they realized I was in Baltimore. And, uh, um, and it was just, it was, it was a dream made true. You know, this is my first commission bill. That means I, I get paid to do it. But most of the money goes into the build. I decided not to pay myself and get rich because, it, hey, it's, it's, it's Baltimore. It's hometown, right? So um, inside, you have a lot of things going on because inside this building, you have an art gallery and people that actually live inside this thing. That's what makes this building so unique. Um, there's the, uh, the theater themselves where they have, you know, weddings and uh, live concerts. You have the gallery, which is inside here too, which they have, you know, a lot of visual arts. So you got the performing arts and you got the visual arts. And above that, you have art classes because they do give back to the community, uh, which I love myself because I give back to the community and the youth. Um, and then you have the artists who actually live in the apartments who contribute to the art gallery as well. So I think that's just a, a very, that's a real strong staple in the Baltimore community. They're doing a lot for the community. How are they going to use this? They're going to actually use this as a fundraiser. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to auction this off. So this, you can own a piece of history, folks. If they're getting ready to auction this off, you get, you get the bid on this and, and own a piece of history. I know that they're going to have an event um, that they're going to do to reveal this project. Um, there's lights all inside this thing. This thing is beautiful. I took a lot of time. I want to say that this is about 16,000 bricks, Lego bricks. Um, and I took my time with this thing. I looked at br the blueprints that they gave me and I went door to door trying to re recreate every essence of this building as it is in real life. How much time did it take you to build this beautiful piece? 
So I work a full-time job, but overall, I started this project in October and it's finished now. I, I just got to do the lighting. So, but time-wise, I would say this actually took me about uh, 20, 20, 20 days of full 24-hour days. <laughs> so, so 24 hours times 20, and, and, and that is the number that I put into it. If some young people are watching this, what advice do you have for them? The advice I would have for them is to to reach for the sky. Like, you know, if you have a, a great imagination, put these bricks together and build that stuff. My friend Jermaine says, you know, he, he, he loved Transformers, but he could never afford them. So he made them himself. And so you have to have that imagination. You have to want something to do great at it. Whether if it's, you know, building Lego blocks or, or being a basketball star, football star, a, a top shelf lawyer, Whatever you want to be in life, you know, uh, give it 100%. Mine just happened to be imagination. So to, to be a Lego artist or to be on Lego Masters, you got to have a great imagination. All right, Mel, we're looking at the backside. Can we see the inside? Absolutely. Let's start with the bottom floor and we work our way up. Okay. All right. So to my right, to my right, here's the kitchen. In front of that kitchen on the front side is a, a bar lounge area. Um, which is nice. It has a nice mural and everything. And I actually uh, was able to get help with the mural. Uh, a friend of mine actually made a mosaic, like a Lego mosaic to, to replicate the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the mural that's on the bar. Um, here's the stairwell that's right next to the kitchen. Right here is a multi-use bathroom right here. Um, and they had that in front of that on the, on the other side of the hallway is a men and women's bathroom. And then there's a multi-use bathroom right here. All right. Don't forget to wash your hands. Don't forget to wash your hands. That's right. That's right. Um, next to it, we have the art gallery. Now, um, there's wall to wall paintings in that gallery. That's probably the biggest room on the, on the first level. Um, next to that, you have an, there's an office space right here. And behind that office space, you have a green room for the talent that actually performs in the live theater, which is on the front side of the building. Um, if you can zoom in there, you can kind of see the back side of, of the, uh, the theater there. Well, the attention to detail is awesome. You got to put in detail. That's the only way you're going to be a Lego master. <laughs> so that, that's the green room. All right. Yep. All right, let's go upstairs. All right, so as we go upstairs, let's slide right in here. Now, I, what I want you to do is if you can look inside here. Inside here, is that, that's exactly where Baltimore Creative Alliance had their art uh, uh, classes for the, the community. They have, you know, youth classes. They have adult classes. And, and on the far side of that building, it's an, it's an office area. So as you come up the steps, there's the office, and then there's these two classrooms right over here. That's the top of the stairwell, which allows you to go inside of, the, uh, of the, uh, the, the front part of the building. And as you come down, and we'll take a look at it, as you come down, there's a lopsided hallway. Um, and what you're looking at right here are the residential area where the, where the residential artists actually live there so, so they have rooms in there they have rooms there there's a real it's real apartments there and it's real and then some of them are offices but a majority of them are, are apartments and they have actual people that live there so you got their their housing baltimore city residents they're giving classes to the community they're having entertainment it's it's a community staple wow. it is wow. let me take the roof off so you can actually pan down and see some of okay. the detail don't break it now, oh, I got yeah. another question for you. Is there anything yes. glued? No, no glue when it comes to me. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just a rule that I have um, that uh, um, if you're a Lego master, I'm able to build it again. I don't need any glue at all. Why would I need glue? I can, if it falls, I can build it again. So um, it's just a cardinal rule of being a Lego master. You never glue your work. You never glue it. All right, now we're looking down at the roof. So now you're looking down at the roof. The roof is off. This is the stairwell area, and this is the like the, the lobby area of the top floor. Gotcha. Now, as you come down here, as you can see, the angle of the hallway. I actually walked through this hallway, Jimmy, and when you start it off, you can touch both sides by just sticking your arms out. But as you walk further down, it got wider it and up. wider. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that, that was unique in, in itself. Um, and over here, like on the first one, there's an office space right here. 
um, and, and, and he took me into this space right here. This is Studio One. And, uh, um, and so I got the essence of what exactly is in each room, though you can't see it below it, uh, which is the front, the, 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 uh, the, the first level of the apartment. Um, there's a uh, stove in there, there's a sink in there, there's a bathroom in there. Yeah. And I had to put all those details, even though you're not going to see it, that all those details are in there because the minifigures are in there. So they are people. They are. You got to take it seriously. They are people. And so I, I have those amenities in there. So for what's them. the second room there? So the second one is a residential area that I made there. Um, and so she has her art on the, on the wall. There's just a resident sitting there, art resident. She looks very artsy. She's diving into the Internet right there. The, uh, the third room is another residential area there that I set, you know, that I set up right here. Um, this, uh, this fourth one is another residential area. And, and, and mind you, I had to be more creative now uh, because I couldn't go and knock on everybody's door because that'd be kind of rude too. Right. Um, so I, I took the liberal, you know, liberal creative and put some art on the wall to make it real art. Do they have a cat or a dog? I don't know. Okay. Said, they, they got a cat today. <laughs> they got a cat. Uh, so then I put an office on the last, on the second to last one here, and there's another residential area right here. And on, on the further side, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six spaces on this side over here, and there were only three spaces on, on the adjacent side here. Um, <clears throat> And so I used uh, two as residential areas and one as an office um, space. And then I got the elevator here and the stairwell is right over here. Did you so, wire it as you went along or did you wire it last? I wired it last because I, I needed to see exactly where I was going to run these wires. And now I can go back and actually tuck these wires in afterwards. Mel, thanks for your time. And this is just amazing piece of art to see. And... Um, the time it took him to build this, I think he said 20, 24 hour days. So you do the math. I wonder how many seconds that is. Somebody will figure that out. But uh, I want to thank Mel for being my guest today. And speaking of the Baltimore Creative Alliance, I've been to several shows here. My buddy Matt, who played music, they honored the uh, Rolling Stones one night. And then they also honored John Prine. It was like eight groups from bluegrass to rock and roll. And coming up on future shows on Pit Stop, I'm going to honor some musicians like Matt and his band and many others. And it's been a rough year for everyone, especially musicians that haven't been able to play during this pandemic. So look forward to tuning in to Traffic Jam Jimmy Pit Stop, and I'll see you next time.